what are the different types of risk in an IT environment, uh, what are the different types of controls that can be put or that can be implemented. We covered upon uh, like general uh, controls, your automated controls and IT dependent controls, where or which areas the general controls mainly implemented, what does it take care of and also we saw the compliance aspect that is as per the companies that what are the different compliance aspect that has to be fulfilled what are the internal what are internal financial controls and what is the role of an auditor with respect to internal financial controls whether it is implemented properly or designed and maintained properly he has to mention in his report or he has to give the opinion with respect to the same and also we broadly saw the framework like starting from the risk assessment evaluation and analysis of that evaluation of the risk and then uh, uh, finding out the operating effectiveness checking the operating effectiveness of that and finally reporting so the now last part of this particular chapter that is the audit in an automated environment we'll see what is the data analytics what is the use of data analytics in audit and what are the different kinds of data analytics tools and how it is being done so broadly, uh, whenever, like say for example, I need certain information, or any company, let it not be for audit purpose alone, any company, like say for example, I'm making an e-commerce company, for example, it wants to analyze, say for example, the total sales that happened on a particular day of the month, say today it is 10th August. On 10th August, after 3 o'clock, uh, pertaining to a particular locality in Chennai, say for example, Chinagar in Chennai. So I want the total list of sales or total sales that happened in a particular locality. I mean, total sales that has happened in that particular company uh, on this particular day after three o'clock and within a particular locality in Chennai. I want to see how much has the sales being contributed by the particular population in Chennai alone on that particular day. Now, this is not a blank information. I cannot get readily get these kind of information from the uh, by seeing the financials of now, I have to utilize the data, whatever is being obtained from the financials, whatever is the data, say for example, the total turnover, the total geography wise turnover and again specifically state wise turnover, place wise turnover and on a particular date, on a particular time. Now this much of data I have to drill down. I cannot directly get the data at one instant. So, for in order to obtain meaningful information, so this information, if I know what is the total sales that is made because a new product was launched today after 3 o'clock and I want to see how much is the total customer base at a particular locality, I want to see whether I want to introduce the product, more quantities of that product in that particular area or like how much should be the stock that should be held in the company. I want to also calculate the stock holding. So, I want some data out of this. Now, for this kind of data, I'll get only by drilling down. It is not readily available. I have to get the reports. I have to understand the reports. I have to get few various operations I have to perform on the data. And then only I can derive it such specific information. And this specific information, by using this, I can take better or informed decisions. Now, in order to arrive at these kind of information, I'm using a combination of tools. I'm using a combination of tools or maybe a combination of process and in order to tap this vast amount of data that is lying in the particular system. So I want to use some kind of tools or processes to tap these large volumes of data and the main reason why I want to tap these large volumes of data is to arrive at some kind of meaningful information so that the management can take informed decisions. This kind of tools or this kind of processes or this kind of techniques which is used for tapping vast amount of electronic data to obtain this meaningful information, these are called as data analytics tools. So basically these data analytics tools are mainly used in the testing of electronic records or the data that is present in the information system so that I can get more information for the efficient operation of the particular business and to achieve the goals on a effective manner. Now I said there are a set of tools and processes and techniques that is used uh, for tapping this vast amount of data. Now this process is called as data analytics. Now what are the tools or whatever techniques are used in order to apply the principles of data analytics that is in order to tap large volumes of data in order to get the required reports in order to drill down and to take informed decisions. Now what are the tools are used? There is a combination of tools and processes and techniques that are used. 
these tools and combination of techniques which I use in order to apply the principles of data analytics, these tools are called as CAD tools or computer assisted audit techniques. So CAD tools, it actually provides a platform wherein I need not do the testing on the live or production environment. I told you what is a production. That means once the development is done, I do the testing. The user is also doing a part of testing, user acceptance testing. I do all the design and development analysis, testing, user acceptance testing. Every testing is done. Now I finally implement so that the user can use the system. Say I made an app for a particular client. Now the app is so ready that it has been developed completely and tested fully. Now the particular user can use the app. Now this particular point or this position is called as a go live or production environment. That he can actually use the app for his day to day real time business activities. Now whenever this particular production system is there, I cannot test on the production system. You are not allowed to test on the production system. Any kind of data only before production I need to set. So when the user is using the production system, the class, uh, uh, entity or the service provider, he needs to make sure that all the testing is done in a kind of platform that is similar to a production environment, but it is not a production environment, something similar to a production environment so that he can find out where, where what are the weaknesses or what are the material control weaknesses or what are the things that he needs to improve. This kind of platforms, these kind of tools or techniques which the auditor uses, these all come together where we cannot do in the production system but it forms as a platform or a dummy version where I can perform all these stuff. These are called as compute rated audit techniques. Now, what are the benefits? I told you by analysis, what happens in the example I gave you itself is analyzing the company is analyzing the total sales from that particular locality in Chennai after it introduces a product by noon on a particular day. Now what happens by doing such kind of an analysis or by using such kind of a information, what happens it will come to a conclusion whether that particular product is profitable or not, whether it needs to introduce or increase the production of that particular product or manufacture of that particular product and also give. Yeah, so what happens is automatically when the turnover or when the sale of that product is higher, the company will increase the production or manufacture of that particular product as a result of which what happens, it will cater to the needs of a large volume more customers as a result indirectly, it will increase a better customer service, it will give rise to better customer service in one hand. Then what, since other companies are not much aware of this fact or they are not using this data analytics techniques or they are not giving, obtaining knowledge from the obtained information that you have obtained through data analytics, there is always a competitive advantage. Always a competitive, you are ahead of your competitors because you know which product sells in which locality at what particular time and by which uh, budget range or what is the financial capability of the people who buy that product. So you can design the product accordingly and you can market the same thing at the right time. So what happens is your customer base increases, your client customer service increases, your competitive advantage increases and finally what happens your efficiency increases and finally what happens your revenue or your profitability increases. That is the one thing if you are doing a business it should give you money right. So finally your profitability or your earnings increases or the total performance of the company as a whole also increases. So this is what data analytics is all about. What are the advantages of data analytics? Now where is it used? Where is data analytics used? So <clears throat> now whenever we take the data, we normally it is done on a like say we have to check whether the source data is reliable or not. So when the source data itself is not reliable, we already saw one of the risks There is inaccurate processing of data or processing inaccurate data. When source data is wrong, what happens? Whatever is processed is also wrong because it is processing of inaccurate data. So what happens? I have to check in the beginning whether data is complete, accurate and reliable. So one of the uses of data analytics is to check the completeness of data. I do a number of processes, I extract the data, transform something and I work on whether the data is complete in all aspects. Sometimes this data, whatever I am taking, sometimes I may not take the entire data, I might take only a portion of the data, I may sample a portion, 
I might take a small portion of the data which represents the entire population. I may do sampling, random or systematic sampling, right? So now again for selection of audit sample, this becomes vital. So it's not just for completion of data, but also for selection of samples. Now again, I want to recompute the balances from some transactions. I want to build up the trial balance. So again, your data analytics comes into picture. Then analysis of journal entries, whether the journal entries are correctly entered, all transactions are captured, whether these entries are being posted into the sub-ledger, sub-ledger to general ledger, trial balance, okay, analysis of journal entries. Then re-performance of mathematical calculation. I don't have to explain that. Your computational speed as well as if you want to check re-performance, I told you it is the most effective method, but when it is automated, it's done through system, it saves a lot of Time. So again, re-performance is another advantage of this particular <coughs> data analytics. And when I'm checking all these data, I'm getting all the information. Say, for example, I find that in the example that is <coughs> and that is obtained, there is a huge sales of a particular product at the particular commodity. Now I can compare this particular data with the total sales for a different product at the same locality and I can also maybe for the same product at the same locality in the previous quarter. So I can see what is the increase or decrease in sales if there is a substantial increase or a huge increase, significant increase or decrease in the sales then I can see there is some kind of a inconsistency in the data. So either the data should be wrong or there is some kind of fraud. So again this helps in the concept of improving your helping with fraud investigation. So again, fraud investigation and finally what any kind of control deficiencies, what is the impact? I, I want to see if this particular control is not there, how it affects the sales of that particular company. If this particular product is, if this particular data is not analyzed properly, I am, give, uh, the particular segregation of duties is not proper, how it impacts the particular aspect of business. So all these are your uses. One is completeness to check the completeness of data. Again to selection of audit samples, computing the balances, recomputing the balances, your calculations, re-performance of the calculations, analyzing the journal entries and finally fraud investigation and control deficiency evaluation. So all these are uses of data analytics. Now how is it done? So normally I told you the first step in an, any audit will be understanding the environment, business environment. If it is in an automated or IT environment, you understand the business environment, including the automated environment, your IS, IS or your IT environment. Now, once you understand the environment, now the next step is you have to define what is the role, what you have to do in that particular um, in that particular audit. What is the objective? What is the criteria? What is, what is the goal that you are going to do? Now, once you are very clear that I am going to audit this particular aspect of that entity to check whether the controls are proper or to check whether any kind of risk of material misstatement is there, I am very clear with the objective. Now, what I do, I'll check for the data. I have to test the data. Then only I can see if there is any kind of inconsistency in the data. I have to check the data. Now, firstly, I have to make sure the data is correct. Before I check whether the system is processing the data correctly, I need to check whether the data itself is accurate and complete in all aspects. So now I have to identify from where the data is coming, where who is initiating the invoices, where from where the invoices are coming, what kind of receipts and all these things I have to analyze. I have to identify the source of data, what format the data is being entered into the system. Say if it is a numerical value, I need to make sure that the system takes data only in that particular format. So whether there is any kind of a input validation checks, that is an inaccurate format of data or wrong data is being fed into the system, I have to make sure that. So I have to identify the source and also I have to identify the format of data. What is it? Once I identify the data, I know this is a data, this is a format it should be. What I have to do? I have to extract the data. I'll take the data, make sure that it is there in the system. I have to extract the data from one system to another. It should be files, it can be notepad, it can be Excel, it can be ERP, it can be database. From anywhere, the data, I have to check the accuracy and it is extracted. Now, in the process of extraction, I'll check whether it is complete and accuracy. Now, what happens? I have some criteria. 
Say for example, in the sales of that particular product in the locality in Chennai at the particular time, I'll apply the criteria. I'll make sure that this criteria, I want the data for this product wise for the particular product ID at this particular geography wise, that is India in that state wise, Chennai in that again locality wise, then at what date, at what date I need and at what time I need. So all these criteria I apply. I apply all the criteria and I get the result. Once it processes, I get the result. So what happens? Once I get the results, I validate that. I see, I get the validate, I confirm the results and finally what I'll do, I'll get some kind of information or knowledge you, which you, I use for reporting and documentation. I'll recommend the results and I'll also use for reporting. Clear? So this is how your data analytics, how data analytics is useful for audit. What are the different types of, what is data analytics? What is computer aided audit techniques? What are the different benefits? What are the uses of that? How it is being done? Now, finally, we saw the risk. We saw the controls. We saw the impact of risk. We saw the different types of controls. We understood the environment. From the beginning, we understood what are the benefits of e, uh, automated environment. Then we saw what are the things the auditor should check whenever he goes to a particular uh, audit in an automated environment. What under, for understanding the particular environment, then what are the different types of risk in that environment? Uh, what are the impact of those risk in auditing? Then we saw what controls, different types, general application IT dependent controls. And finally, what are, where are the places the general controls are effective or whether they have to be implemented because they support both application as well as IT dependent controls. Then we saw what <coughs> the compliance or regulatory aspects, why I have to implement all this. What is the meaning of internal financial control? And then we saw what, what are the regulatory requirements as per the Companies Act. And then what is the general framework by risk, starting from risk assessment evaluation, then checking the effectiveness, operating effectiveness of controls and finally reporting. And then we saw what is data analytics. <coughs> data analytics, what are the uses of data analytics and what is, how is it done? <coughs> now, Last portion, after I do all the things, I get the report, I do the risk, I mean, I find out the risk, implement the controls, I get the report. Now what I have to do, I have to assess and report the audit findings. I have to assess and report the audit findings. So how, how is it done? So first, if I, any, I have to check for any kind of weakness. And this weakness is not a small weakness, it may be material weakness. It should cause some kind of significant risk in and whatever is the financial reporting process, because of this particular risk, there is a non-reliability in the financial reporting process because the financial reporting process is no longer reliable. In such cases, I have to first identify the risk. What are the weaknesses in the system? Now, any weaknesses which is material, I'll report it to management first. Now, if the particular weakness is significant, if it is causing a huge damage, our risk of material misstatement is huge, what happens? I have to communicate to those charged with governance. I have to directly communicate to the next level, that is those charged with governance. Now, while I'm communicating to the management, through what I'll communicate? I'll communicate using a internal control memo or a management letter. I use a management letter or internal, internal control memo to communicate the deficiencies to the management. Now, once I communicate to the management, I will still or calculate the impact or significance of that particular risk or weakness. If it is significant, I'll communicate it to the those charged with governance. Before communicating, I'll check whether there is any kind of a mitigating or compensating controls. Mitigating or compensating controls means what? Suppose his main controls or the pivotal controls are designed, but it is somewhere it is not implemented or functioning properly. Is there any kind of a backup or any control? which reduces the severity of the risk produced or risk by the use of this IT systems. Any other backup control or any mitigating or compensating control is being placed. So my next duty is to check whether there is any kind of a compensating controls present. This is a one thing. Now, once compensating controls or mitigating controls are not there, even it is directly the risk is uh, bare and the system is um, open to any kind of a vulnerable to any kind of risk that is being coming on its way, then I have to directly communicate to those charge with governance. And also, uh, that will also, I have to modify my report accordingly. It will have an impact on the report. 
it will I have to give qualifications I have to mention about how effective the controls are so this is all about and suppose if there is no material weaknesses no deficiency in the system then also what I'll do I'll document all the process whatever I have done to do the audit or do the testing it could be inspection inquiry observation or maybe repuffance what are the procedures I have conducted what is the transaction what walkthrough of the transaction I got what are the test scenarios I have created what testing I have done what are the result I have got what is the risk assessment all these things I'll document I'll document everything and then finally I give the report and the report it can be modified or unmodified depending on most it will be unmodified if there is uh, no particular control weaknesses and there is no particular risk of material misstatement so here we come to a conclusion of this particular chapter uh, that is audit in an automated environment uh, we covered almost all the points in that particular chapter starting from what is automated environment what are the key benefits what are the key features what is the relevance of IT in a particular audit uh, what are the benefits of that then what are the aspects the auditor has to inquire for getting an understanding of the automated environment then we came to what are the risks associated with an automated environment and uh, what are the impact how this risk has an impact on the audit procedures or on the audit and finally we saw once the risk is covered we saw what are the controls that has to be put in place what are the controls general application and IT dependent controls then we came to compliance aspect what is the compliance aspect required as per the companies act what is internal financial controls and as per your internal financial controls what are the things that has to be reported as per companies act then what is the general framework and then we saw what is data analytics its uses and how it is done and finally we saw how to assess and report the findings so we'll see in the next session now with another topic uh, i hope it was useful for you